They're sprinting away from that 1,200 metre mark. Arctic Swift was slow to stride two lengths. Mystical Sword also slow out the gate and Maple Stories a couple lengths off. The yellow cap of Lucky Bob and Anton Marcus very swift to respond as the early leader. And Matt takes a seat towards the inside about two and a half lengths off. Dusk Beauty, look at this making way towards the inside, two lengths off. Simona's right there, Oracle Princess. Maple Story makes a length. At this stage, Trippy's Girl, just a little bit green towards the outside. Red Sleeves and Cap got about four lengths to make up as they tack over towards the inside. Tiki Tin tries to get a length closer. Coming to the 400, Lucky Bob still being sat on. Dust Beauty's on the outside. And Matt's looking for a way through towards the inside. Look at Trippy's Girl, Red Sleeves and Cap. Lagitanel is running on towards the outside. Some scrimmaging towards the outside. Running on Maple Story, but Trippy's Girl hit the front with 200 to go still running very green maple story simona's trying to close in late on but over the last hundred trippy's girl in front three parts of the length and that's where she's going to stay simona's second then it's very very tight between andermatt and maple story in photos Number 15, Trippy's Girl, the daughter of Trippy, was just hidden away first call. Still quite green coming to the 200, but she came forward to strike the front. She had the race runners beaten, and then the debutante started to try and make some inward roads. A horse like Maple Story staying on. Simona's on the outside, and that'll come out second best. Simona's second. Maple Story and Andermatt go past the post together. Closest to us, number 8. Maple Story might just have the nose down with number one and a mat, but we'll wait on confirmation. Then came Dusk Beauty. La Jetanilla further back in the running. Tiki Tin. Lucky Bob had speed, but just folded inside the 200. Towards the outside, look at this one. Trippy's Girl comes forward, hits the front, bred by Bruce LaRue for the Triple H Trust, the Hattings. Stuart Randolph quite confident coming to the 400. He knew that he had horse under him, but still quite green. And the last 150 just shakes her up to keep that momentum going. The debutants chasing home. Simona staying on nicely. Then we found Maple Story in photos with number one and a mat. But it's all about number 15, Trippy's Girl from the Glenn Cotson team. Back to the studio. Well, number 15, Trippies Girl, she looked apart today after a smart debut and rightfully been back to start favourite on Tab Gold. And Glenn Cotson is making Mr. Hatting, uh, his colours a bit famous here in KZN, the Triple H Tuss. Of course, I say this because uh, over the weekend uh, they bagged uh, the feature for the juvenile with final judgment in these same stills, Glenn. So you're having a good run for these owners. Yeah, absolutely. Look, uh, Ugit's an absolute gentleman, and I just want to say well done to him and Susanna. They are big uh, supporters of, of my yard, so I really appreciate it. Um, but well done to Druckenstein Stud for the stallion and Bruce LaRue for his uh, breeding this beautiful filly. Um, she, she was a really a filly that I absolutely loved and uh, you guys, if you love it, let's get it. And uh, so we had to pay a couple of rand for her, but she's a gorgeous filly and um, she's off board of the national sale, so yeah, we're delighted. You had a spot on today, the way Stuart rode her, the way she kicked on when she was asked for an effort. I mean, she was... Uh at her best, and there could be more to come as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think, look, I mean, it was just natural improvement. You know, first run, she was really green, and uh, looking at the ring, she looked the part, so uh, we were really chuffed with her. Give our best, Mr. Hatting. A lovely uh, three days it's been for him. Uh, Saturday to uh, Wednesday, should I say five days? I'm losing track. I think I slept for two days in between, Glenn. But uh, before you leave us, you got some nice runners coming up later on. Yeah, we have. Um, I've got uh, Banner Hill for Hugo and Partners uh, coming up, uh, in, I think it's in race five. He won really well last time out and the handicap hasn't got to him yet, so I think he's well weighted. And in the last race, uh, I wouldn't leave uh, our horse out of the exotics. It's not the strongest of the field. He's drawn widest of all, but he's a, he's a beautiful colt. Fellow traveller. Yeah. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thanks for that. Well done to Glenn Cotts and the stables bang in form. And it must be really a pleasure to ride in these horses. First is Stu. We saw final judgment in these same silks. What a ride from you, uh, reversing the form with a fully like Maleficent. And today, you are sitting still as a statue. <laughs> yeah, no, I must say she, she came on nicely from the first run. The first one was over about a five furlong. I thought it was a little bit too quick for her, but she made late headway, you know, which was a, was a girl, going to be a natural improvement to this run and today she franked that form. 
you know, uh, uh, if they have in-running betting here in this country, I mean, the boys would have cleaned up, even if you are 1 to 10 at the 400. Yeah, no, shame. She really moved up well. She, the first race I brought her on nicely, and now a big thank you to Glenn and his team. And Lunga, they're doing a great job, and it's nice to have another winner for Mr. Hatting. It turned out to be a lovely Vodacom Durban July for you. I, I know you were the def defending champion of the race. Not ideal the way your horse went, solid speed. But the balance of the day, you, you picked up a nice feature as well. Yeah, it was a nice day. But um, uh, like you say, it was solid speed, uh, having bled, uh, sort of put a little bit of a damper. But anyway, we're glad we had to have that feature. And we'll take it with both hands. Today, how's your rides looking? Glenn touched on Banner Hill and the one at the back. Yeah, I'd have to concur with what are your sentiments on those two. That horse banner, he looks like a useful stayer, three-year-old. Yeah, he's come on nicely. I didn't ride him last time. Obviously, the weight was uh, out of my range. But uh, today's come up a bit. He hasn't been penalised too badly, but with 54 on his back, he should be a contender. Just a quick comment on the draw in the last. Do you have a plan, or are you just going to let it go as, as it happens? Because it's not the strongest of field. You would have had a look at the balance. Yeah, we're going to have to sort of let that one how it goes. Um, you know, out there, anything can happen. So we'll see how he breaks and take it from there. But it was a good debut. Yeah, no, it was nice. He was running on nasty. Thanks for that, Stuart. Thanks very much, Jeez. Well done. Stuart uh, Randolph here for Glenn Cotson on number 15, Trippie's Girl. And uh, if you caught this court, this should be a useful dividend. Uh, some of the fancied horses missing out. 15, 13, 8 and 1. That's the way they cross the line, race number 2. If everything goes according to plan, according to my producer, Raymond Rogers, race number 3 will begin at 13.25, which is 25 past 1. And it will be the start of uh, the place accumulator up next in the third.